We're back in the fantasy bar. Week four is here. We are back with six of my favorite plays for you on FanDuel and DraftKings, including one passing offense. I definitely want to stack up tonight, and we will include a run back on the other side. A couple running backs in the mid-range I think are in great spots this week. A tight end. Some you're going to love, some you're going to hate, but definitely going to be low-owned in a spot I think he can break out in. And, of course, my favorite play on the entire slate in a dream matchup this week. Who are we talking about? Only one way to find out. It's time to belly up to the fantasy bar. Welcome in, guys. Week four edition. Can't believe we're already here at week four, but we are back with six of my favorite plays for you on Fandle and DraftKings. Thank you, as always, for stopping by the Fantasy Bar and checking out this week's video. Before we get to those plays, take a second, click that thumbs up button, make sure you are subscribed, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of the content here. Now, before we get into the plays for week four, let's talk some splash board. Let's talk Survivor has been an absolute nightmare unless somehow uh, you have made it through the gauntlet, but good news, the revival is in full swing. You can dive into another thrilling week of contests on Splash Sports this week, including the $10,000 Roto-Grinders Survivor Revival, along with a fantasy tiers and a against the spread pick em contest. This is now available in 34 states. Splash Sports dominates the peer-to-peer -peer fantasy and betting scene. Head to SplashSports.com slash Roto-Grinders and challenge the Roto-Grinders expert community, including myself, I will be in these contests as well. You can use promo code ROTO10 to receive a $10 credit after you enter your first contest. All right, let's get into week four. Let's start at the running back position with Brian Robinson of Washington. So Robinson one I really like this week. No Austin Eckler. What's that going to mean? It's going to be even more usage for Brian Robinson. Yes, we'll see some other guys sprinkle in, but I think there'll be more usage on the ground. And I think we'll see him a little bit more involved in the passing game than what we have seen early on here in the season. And we all saw that electric performance by Jaden Daniels in that game against the Cincinnati Bengals. Seems like that's where a lot of people are gonna wanna go here, but let's not forget about Robinson. I don't mind the passing game. I will certainly have some against the Arizona Cardinals, but Robinson 17 and a half touches per game over the last two. And it's a good matchup for him as well. Over the first three weeks, Cardinals seventh most rushing yards allowed and bottom 10 in fantasy points to this position. I think Brian Robinson could be a sneaky option here this week against the Arizona Cardinals. Speaking of the Cardinals, let's go to that side and get you our second running back with James Conner. I've spoke about this before. I don't necessarily like giving you running backs out of the same game. This doesn't have to be the only build you use. This is more of a portfolio tool. And I like both of these guys this week. Another spot, Kyler Murray gonna get talked up a lot in a great matchup here with Washington. Don't mind that either, but I think this is a fantastic spot for James Conner to get back on track. Last week, we know one of the best run defenses in the league, the Detroit Lions shut him down. The two games before that, we're talking over 20 touches a game and almost 21 DraftKings points per game. Washington, bottom half of the league in pretty much every category we would want here. Fantasy points, rushing yards, and the receiving game, which we know Connor can be a big part of here as well. That Cardinals passing game, certainly something to target. Don't forget about James Connor at potential low ownership. All right, let's get to a controversial call here at tight end. Yes, we are rolling with Travis Kelsey. Now, I realize some of you are going to shut off the video, say you're crazy, hear me out here. The sentiment on Travis Kelsey right now is that he is washed, as the kids love to say. And it certainly has not been a good run out for Kelsey over the first couple weeks of the season. To watch the games, just does not look like the same player. But I'm gonna take my shot here. I don't think we get any ownership on Travis Kelsey here. The tight end position, absolutely ugly this weekend. A lot of injuries, not a lot of guys jump out. And I think the Chiefs are gonna go out of their way to get this guy involved in this matchup. Normally one we would avoid with Derwin James, but he is suspended, making this matchup much more appealing here for Travis Kelsey. We know Rashi Rice has been tearing it up. He's gonna be the focus of the defense. David Worthy had some deep routes. I think you're gonna see Travis Kelsey have a big day over the middle of the field here at potentially one to 2% ownership. Not a play for everybody, but certainly one I'm gonna be diving in on this week with Travis Kelsey. All right, to the wide receiver position next with Christian Kirk of Jacksonville. So speaking of tight ends, Evan Ingram looking dicey this week. I don't know that he plays, even if he does, this is likely, again, a very pass-heavy script. I don't think there's been a bigger disappointment in the league this season than the Jacksonville Jaguars, who were absolutely blitzed by the Buffalo Bills last week. 
once again find themselves at six, six and a half point underdogs. And we saw Kirk elevate to the primary target in this offense, 10 targets last week. And this is a very similar feel this week going into Houston. Likely have to throw the ball a ton here. I get it. It's very tough to trust Jacksonville anything right now. But what does that mean? It means low ownership here. I think Kirk is too cheap, especially over on DraftKings. And it's a solid matchup. Avoid some of those corners on the outside. Texans bottom 10 in fantasy points allowed to the wide receiver position this season. And Christian Kirk in for a big day against the Houston Texans. All right, speaking of the Texans, let's go to that side with my favorite quarterback in CJ Stroud. So Stroud not off to a horrible start this season, but certainly not looking like the guy we saw last year. I think that changes here this week. Prices continue to fall. This is a spot I want to buy in against this Jacksonville defense. They've given up big performances from pretty much every quarterback they've played. Top 12 every single week for those quarterbacks. They are bottom five in the league already in passing yards and touchdowns and fantasy points. A great spot here for CJ Stroud. What I really like, tons of ways we can stack him. We know there are three viable receivers there. Dalton Schultz at the tight end position. They're projected for 26 points here in this game. I think we see Houston go over 30. Sure, they could dominate this game and use their running game, but I think the big reason they dominate is through their passing attack and C.J. Stroud. All right, it's time. Take a look at my favorite play for week four. Before we do that, let's continue our Beast of the Week contest. Easy to play. Just click that thumbs up button, head to the comment section, and guess fantasy points for my Beast of the Week on DraftKings. Whoever's guess is the closest. We're going to give you your choice of a free month of Roto-Grinders Premium, a free month of Scores and Odds Premium, or some free Roto-Grinders swag. All right, let's wrap it up with my favorite play for week four. You know, Matt, Beast of the Week. This time we've hinted at this. There's a team I want to stack. We still owe you a wide receiver. We are rolling with Nico Collins of the Texans. This week's beast of the week. And what a beast Collins has been this season. The clear number one target in this Houston Texans passing attack, averaging over nine targets per game and a whopping 112 receiving yards per game. Has absolutely dominated man coverage among the best in the league. And nobody plays more man coverage this season then the Jacksonville Jaguars also love to use press coverage and he's thrived there as well. So you couldn't draw up a better matchup here for Nico Collins. Jacksonville really giving it up two wide receivers, six most receiving yards already, eight most fantasy points. I think this Houston Texans offense ready to explode. I think they do it this week. And Nico Collins goes over 100 yards and scores twice. Nico Collins easily. My favorite play on the board in this week's piece of the week. All right, guys, that'll do it for our week four six pack. As always, any comments, questions, or feedback, hit me up in that YouTube comment section or on Twitter at BeermakersFan. Don't forget, get your guess in for Nico Collins, fantasy output on DraftKings for a shot to win some free Roto-Grinders or scores and odds premium or some free Roto-Grinders swag. And while you're down there, get your guess in. Also, who is your favorite play on the entire slate? Sound off in that YouTube comment section. Make sure you head over to Splash Sports dot com slash roto grinders and get involved in some of the new contests over there including the survivor revival i will be joining that as well trying to get some redemption and head over to our scores and odds youtube page for my pints and picks video where i give you two prop bets i absolutely love for week four roto grinders.com i am beer saying salut guys thank you so much for watching best of luck here in week four and we'll see you next time thanks for checking out our videos don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more DraftKings, FanDuel, and other dfs content and you can check out our daily live show schedule on rotogrinders.com slash videos